the Red Sea. Was it the Red Sea or is that a, yeah. a typo? Yeah, yeah. No, um, the, the Hebrew says Yam Suf, which means Sea of Reeds. So I think that the body of water that's being talked about is one of the many large reedy lakes uh, that are on the border of Egypt that that uh, that um, cause a major barrier to travel when you're trying to get what is that east okay. and out of Egypt. Okay, and uh, it gets translated in the Septuagint as the Red Sea. Why is that? Um, uh, probably because they were uncertain of the meaning of the Hebrew and they were trying to connect it up with a body of water that they mm-hmm. knew was geographically in that area. Okay. So I suspect there was that. So God yeah. didn't necessarily, the God didn't split the Red Sea then? Uh, not as we know it. Okay. I wouldn't, I, I don't, you know, there, there are those who theorize that he did, you know, and that, that argue and that have a root for the Exodus and, and so, and I have no problem with my God splitting no. a major body of water. That's not a problem for me, but it's just that, you know, the Hebrew says Yam Suf, you know, uh, which is sea of reeds. And I think that the intention is, um, you know, we don't know exactly what the, what the layout was because at, at the border of Egypt, you kind of got a rift Valley there and you got many of these, these, these lakes there. Um, and, uh, but, but one of them, uh, was this, uh, you know, sea of reeds and, uh, it's still a miracle because, you know, you could say, well, it wasn't as much water, but well, it was plenty enough water to drown the whole Egyptian army. <laughs> okay. Now, so uh, if, this, that, if this event actually occurred, shouldn't we expect to find chariots and armor from Egyptian sh- soldiers in some of these? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would, would expect so. But yeah, we haven't? But it, no, we haven't yet, but it's not just very easy to go through and do a systematic you <laughs> know, excavation. Let's go the water again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's at the bottom of the Red Sea, I mean, these are politically charged places. They're not easy to go in there. You got to get, you know, you got to get permission from different governments. Everybody's got to have an, has a, has an interest in this. So it's just not easy to conduct. But surely people have tried. Uh, they have, yeah. you know, and they, people have had, have tried and people have seen things that look like. Uh, chariots at the bottom of the sea and, uh, you know, fleeting glimpses of artifacts that they were not able to mm. recover. Um, so there's, there's tantalizing reports, um, but, uh, but nothing, you know, verified at this point. So then if the Exodus account is accurate, what about the splitting of the Sea of Reeds? Do we have any other reasons, if any incidental reasons or any such thing like that to think that it actually happened? Well, the the Exodus route is very plausible, and uh, you know, for on, on a question like this, I would really recommend the works of James K. Hoffmeyer, who was is a professional Egyptologist and taught for a number of years at uh, Trinity International University and Trinity Evangelical Divinity School up in the Chicago area. And uh, he's got two books in particular, uh, one called Israel in Egypt and the other called Israel in Sinai. And one's about the historicity of, um, you know, the, the Israelite sojourn in Egypt. Um, and he points to, you know, a, a lot of evidence for large groups of Semitic slaves in Egypt during the second, uh, I'm sorry, during the new kingdom period, et cetera, their housing and where they would have lived and so on. Uh, unfortunately, the area where the Egypt, where the Israelites lived was in, you know, muddy Delta land that just basically kind of absorbs anything that gets built on it. Mm. So it's, it's really hard to excavate. It's not as, not as nice as upper Egypt is very dry desert conditions and things will preserve for thousands of years. So it's hard to get, uh, you know, precise, uh, archeological remains from the areas where the Israelites live. We have some though, that points to, um, you know, uh, Semitic slaves, Semitic would be the, the, uh, people group that the Israelites are part of. And, um, you know, the, the Exodus route is plausible and some of the specific geographical markers, uh, that are mentioned, you know, can be connected. You can kind of connect the dots and the ancient geographical locations of these, um, Egyptian, uh, fortresses and border cities and so on as you mark the way out. So who's ever writing the account of the Exodus has a familiarity with mm. Egyptian geography in the second, in why do I keep saying second temple, 
thinking New Testament stuff, in the New Kingdom period. Mm. So there's a lot of, again, a lot of circumstantial evidence for the plausibility and the historical context of the narrative. So really, yeah, I'd really recommend that. Hoffmeyer, Israel mm-hmm. in Egypt, and also Israel in Sinai, which you know goes into the book of Numbers, and you can kind of trace the itinerary that's mentioned in Numbers and Deuteronomy from uh, known locations as they're wandering around in the wilderness. And, um, and, and some of the, you know, the, um, the, uh, uh, the cultural phenomena that's mentioned too is, is stuff that's attested out in Sinai, you know, like rocks cracking open and, and releasing water. Um, this is, you know, part of the, the, the nature of the terrain, you get these, these aquifers and sometimes that, you know, the, you got a lot of breccia, which is like these, these shattered rocks and the kind of the geological formations of the area. Mm-hmm. And so you can kind of get the sudden emergence of a spring and that's described a couple of times in, uh, the numbers narrative. So yeah, there's kind of that, that circumstantial evidence. Yep. We would like more, you know, we'd like to, uh, you know, dig up, uh, an Israelite sandal or something like this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, thus far, you know, that's not been forthcoming, but Hey, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls took us till 1947 to uncover. So, Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.